this video, we're going to take a look at one of the most powerful new features of Command PE 2.1, and that is the event hooks can with Lua. Now we have the capability that we didn't have before to actually have hooks, so when certain events are triggered inside of Command, we can actually latch onto them and extract information in them and override anything we need to do. So let's go ahead and set up a couple of these right away. So I'm going to go to the editor, I'm going to go to the Lua script console, and we'll go ahead and establish one immediately. So the first one we have at our disposal is going to be weapon fired. This is triggered whenever a weapon is fired. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new function. I'm going to call it weapon fired. Now inside of that, we can send two different items. I'm going to send the target of the weapon as well as the weapon itself. Now that we've defined the function, it is simply a matter of adding whatever we want to do. So let's keep this pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do is create a simple message. I'll go ahead and create a local message. And I'll say something along the lines of weapon. Then we'll go ahead and get the name of the weapon that was fired. Weapon dot name is fired at target dot name. So now we'll go ahead and use the message box function. Display our message and use the type one. So now to actually save this so that we can go ahead and use this, well, actually, before we do that, we should probably uh, do a quick return. We want to make sure we remember all of our options. I'm just going to say, OK, keep it nice and simple for today. So what this function is going to do is it's going to override the weapon fired function, and it's going to cause a little pop up box to appear if a weapon gets fired in a scenario. So let's go ahead and execute this code. Uh, one of the great places to put code like this, by the way, is if you're creating an event editor, you can create yourself an event that starts at the beginning of the scenario. So once that event is triggered, you could execute this code so you always get it every time. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Oh, we spotted a target. Takes a moment. Looks like it's hostile. Weapon on the way. So now notice this message now popped up because we overrid the inbuilt function that would normally be handling this, and it's able to give us critical data about this. Now we can export it, we can use this as a way to go ahead and latch on to this weapon that was launched, and we can use it to generate new weapons, we can generate special countermeasures, we can move targets, we can do anything because we have all of this information at our disposal. Go ahead and press OK, and you can see that weapon is on the way right away. Now, the next thing we're going to do, once we'll go ahead and pause, is we'll create another function. And this particular one is going to go ahead and grab onto the weapon as it's going to impact. So to do that, it's going to be a little bit different. Clear out this function. It's still in effect. We'll type in weapon function weapon impacts before. As usual, we're going to pass the weapon as well as the target itself. So the way this one works is a little different. What we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing so you can see the resultants. I'm going to say local message equals weapon. Go ahead and put a space like we did before. We'll say weapon.name, just like we did last time. Whoops, watch out for your quotes. Is about to hit. Now we can simply say target.name. Now, one of the things we have to be careful with here is if the weapon is not going to be striking something that is there, for example, it got destroyed already, we could run into kind of a nasty position. So let's go ahead and improve our code a little bit here. So I'm going to now say if target does not equal nil, then I'm simply going to say message equals the message we were just creating, target not name. Otherwise, we're simply going to say print uh, nothing because it simply makes no sense. We'll say message equals uh, message plus, no, not nothing, plus nothing. Because in this case, we're not going to be hitting anything since it doesn't actually have a relevant target. And we'll simply say end here. So now we'll go ahead and use our scenario edit as well. We'll do send edit. We'll do message box, message comma, one, and then we'll go ahead and return nothing because we don't need to return anything for this function. So if everything works, we should be able to press the run and uh, no angry messages will appear here. Now, the way this will work is when the missile is about to strike the target, notice what happened this time. A new message popped up to tell us that this particular weapon was about to hit this. And if I press OK, obviously it got splattered in this particular case. Now, we have one more function that we have the ability to reach in with our Lua event hooks. And that is the fact that we have the ability to detect a weapon that has struck something. This is very, very useful for data analysis, as well as creating all sorts of triggers that you may need to do so. So let's go ahead and generate a function for that as well. So what I'm going to do this time is we're going to go up to a weapon impacts before, and we're simply going to create a new function. This one is going to be weapon impacts after. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take past the weapon name, the target that was struck, 
as well as the resulting text. Now, this is going to be a little bit more involved for us because we need to get the status of the particular weapon that got struck. So in this case, I can uh, determine did the result equal no. In that case, uh, we're pretty much a waste of our time here. So let's go ahead and build this function. I'll pause for just a moment as we bang it all out. All right, let's go ahead and break that code down. So what we do is we create a local message called weapon plus the name of that weapon. Then what we do is we evaluate the result of the impact. In this case, if there's no impact, we go ahead and assume the result, we hit. If there's a different type of result, a true one, we simply says hits. Now the reason impacts is a nil result is because we can strike something without completely hitting it or the weapon itself could fail. So even though we impacted, we didn't actually have a positive true effect. Now, of course, if it does not result in that, we are in a situation where we simply missed the target. Down here, what we're saying is we're saying, does the target not equal no? If it does, in which case, so we're gonna get the message's name of that particular target. Otherwise, what we're gonna do is we'll fix my spelling. And we'll go ahead and say the word nothing in the event that our weapon just kind of went wild and didn't do anything. And again, we can take this function and we don't have to use it for the purposes of just debugging this code here. This is much more powerful than that. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to press the Ren option real quick. If we have any issues, it'll go ahead and give you a warning. In this case, uh, we can see right here on line five, we have made a mistake right here. So we'll go ahead and correct that very, very quickly. We're simply meant to say message impacts. We didn't mean to say that one before. Message, uh, let's see here. Just want to check my notes. Oh, there we go. There we go, much better. Again, no, no errors. So now all we have to do is go ahead and launch the weapon. And when we strike it this time, we should get a slightly different message. Now notice this little pop-up here is our exact message that we created. So as you can see with these new Lua event hooks, we can now determine if something got struck, if something was missed, we can determine when a weapon was fired. We also have the ability to predict or actually know right before a weapon takes impact, which means you can now override every single function just by adjusting one of those core functions directly. Mm -hmm.